Amen? Amen. And we know that the key to the kingdom of God is being in the right state. Yeah. Amen. Amen? Being in the right state means being a clear channel to pass the kingdom of heaven onto this earth. Perfect. So it's like a sandwich. The top, the, the top bun is the kingdom. The bottom bun is the earth. And we are the filling yeah. in the middle. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? That's why it's a vital role we play. Amen. Uh, we, we can bring the kingdom. Amen? And everything this world needs is where? In the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So, we want a complete sandwich today. Just to give you a quick, very, very quick review, just big sketches, big paint brushes. We began about a month ago, and we began talking about how God's glory is in everybody. Mm -hmm. It's trapped. It's a potential. And how God wants to fill this earth with this glory. And the secret to filling it is integrity, or or faithfulness, or aligning our spirit, our soul, our body to be a clear train track so that we can pass the kingdom of heaven and all its glory onto this earth. Amen. That was the first concept we learned. Then we learned that this integrity actually involves a decision-making process. Right? Because if you make the wrong decisions, you cannot line up with God. Amen. But if you make the right decisions, you clearly line up with God. God. Your decisions create your reality. Amen. Mm -hmm. Your decisions create your destiny and your reality. So, of course, God is always trying to influence your decisions because you have free will. Yeah. And Satan is also trying to influence your decisions. Now, in the decision-making process, there are three stages. There is the deliberation. There is the decision. And there is the doing. Amen. Or carrying it out. So I, I have to have a consistent philosophy or a way of making decisions. I have a way of gathering the right information Amen. and weighing it, calculating it. And, and, and for example, say I want to buy a house. I search all the houses. I, I go to a house inspector. I, I, I read books on houses. I try to get all the information to make my best decision. And then when I decide on this house, I don't want to change what? My mind. The or else I'll go back here and I'll never get a house. Amen. Because I can never make a decision, which means to commit to it and cut off all the realm of possibility. Amen. So once, once I'm here and I'm committed, then this should give me motivation to get there. Because I have to take action. I have to get up and actually call the real estate agent. Amen. And we know the flesh is lazy. So without commitment or motivation, Christ can strengthen this part. The God kind of faith, the God kind of stickability. I pick this house. I'm going to keep this house. I'm going to carry through and get this house. You see, I'll never actually, what, get the house. So notice there's, I have to get clarity here. Right? I have to get commitment here. And I have to get completion there. Amen. Now between clarity and commitment, I have to cut off all possibilities. Satan does not want you to cut off possibilities, so you're never really what? Committed. And between my commitment and my completion, I have to travel along a path to do it. And he will distract you along this path, or in fact, he'll try to kill you along the path. So there's the three stages, and there's the in-between. And Satan will attack every one. He tries to give you an evil philosophy. Not the law of the greatest good. Good for you, good for others, good for God. But the law of the flesh, the law of feelings, the law of selfishness. You see, some twisted information in you that is not allowing you to see things, what, properly. Mm -hmm. he, and, and, of course, here, once you make the decision, he will try to diablo or, or get in between you and your decision. Mm -hmm. So your yes is not yes, your no is not no. In fact, this is his favorite attack right here. Yeah. Because he is trying to destroy your integrity or your faithfulness to your own commitments. Perfect. It's one thing to make a decision. It's another thing to what? Keep it. Keep it. Yeah. God said, if you're going to make me Lord, why aren't you your Lord? Right. If you're going to follow me, follow me. If you're going to say you can do this. So even if, even if you have a bad decision, God still expects you to keep it because that's the way you are made. You're made to be integral. You're made to right. make decisions according to a certain philosophy. Keep them and then carry them out. Amen. In fact, when you cannot make decisions according to consistent philosophy, whatever that philosophy might be, and you can't keep them, you can't carry them out, the Bible says that's from what? The enemy. Yes. That's from the enemy. You see? And, and finally, if, if you can commit, and you, and you can't carry it on, and Satan can't attack you, of course, he'll try to attack the completion. Amen. You know? And if you're not clear in the first place, well, then you won't be very committed, and you won't be very 
feel like very what motivated to complete it. Yeah. And we left off last time by the Lord uh, uh, um, unfolding this. Remember in, in Matthew. All of you must keep awake, give strict attention, be cautious and active, and watch and pray that you may not come into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. So there are two sides of us that can make a decision, keep a decision, and carry out a decision. Your flesh can try to make a decision according to its philosophy, keep it according to its own willpower, and try to carry it out according to its own strength. Or your spirit can shed light, your spirit can give you the God kind of faith, and God never breaks his word. Perfect. And God will always strengthen your body or push you through your body to come plead it. Christ carried his cross. It didn't matter how weak his body was. He was totally committed. Perfect. You see? So if you cannot make, keep, and carry out your decisions, you're in the flesh. But if you can make good decisions and keep them and carry them out, you're in the spirit. It's the simple way to tell. Amen? So that's where we are. You're, so we can't release this glory without integrity, but the integrity that we're looking for, the faithfulness we're looking for, the make, keep, and, and, and carry out our good decisions and align with the will of God is in our what? Spirit. Amen. It's in our spirit. Now, we want to switch the camera now. We want to move the camera now from us and how the enemy is attacking us, and we want to switch the camera now and look at the enemy. We're doing a message, we're trying to paint a picture, and we've been looking at us and our decision-making process and our alignment with God and how the enemy's trying to get in. And now we're going to take the camera angle and we're going to move it off us and we're going to look at the enemy. Because the enemy is trying to get in on us. Yeah. Amen? And who the enemy is and what does he control. Amen? So we know we have this tremendous potential. This, this glory inside of us, we know we must be integral in our decision making and in the decision process to release that glory. Hallelujah. God will not release the glory unless you agree with them, unless you keep what you agree, and unless you carry it what? Out. Amen. That's called, I'm going to carry out His will. I got to know His will. I got to stick to His will. I got to complete His will, or the glory of the kingdom can't come. Now, the enemy will not just leave this alone. Let's take a look at this process. And you, he made alive when you were dead, slain by your trespasses and sins. So Adam was originally slain, and we were, and after Adam, we were all slain by our sins and our trespasses. Amen? Now, sin is when you are in the wrong state, when you're in the wrong being, the wrong identity, the wrong nature, and you're in wrongdoing. So Amen. sin is wrongdoing and wrong being. Righteousness is right being, right doing. Perfect. You are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. Now, trespass is a certain kind of sin. Trespass is when you are not in the place you're supposed to be. So once so, so once um, um, Adam had trespassed, once he had taken the apple, gone to a place he wasn't supposed to be, he had trespassed, he had also sinned, because once he trespassed, the enemy entered, and it altered his state, sure. and God kicked him out. And, and we have to be careful of sin and trespass even to this day, because though Christ has atoned for all our suffering, if we sin and trespass, we can't get the kingdom released. Yeah. So he'll heal us, he'll forgive us, so the defense is in place if we sin and trespass, because the wages of sin and trespass are death. Sure. You were dead, you were slain. So Christ has absorbed the death. But we still need life. We still need the kingdom. So, we, so Satan's game is not to get us killed anymore. Because Christ died in our place and took all our death in our place. So even if we sin and trespass, we don't suffer for it. Right? It's like I stick my finger in a socket. I, I don't get electrocuted. Christ gets electrocuted or Christ will heal me. He takes the blow. But I still can't get the blessings of God. I still can't get the promises, the favor, the abundance of God out of heaven. So I've got to look out for sin and trespass. And Satan knows this. Now look at verse 2. In which at one time you walked habitually. So we were just sinning and trespassing left and right. Because once we moved away from God, there was no one to tell us where to go. And there was no one to tell us how to be and what to do. So we were just always traveling in the wrong, being in the wrong place. You know, thinking the wrong thing, feeling the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing. It was a mess. 
He goes, you are following the course and the fashion of this world. We're under the sway of the tendency of this present age, following the prince of the power of the air. So Satan is called the prince of the power of the air. And we need to know what does that mean. What is the prince of the power of the air? Amen. Because unless you know this, you may be under his sway or his influence. You may be following his course and his fashion. He may be molding you and infiltrating you and influencing you. And you will not become what you're supposed to be. You will not do what you're supposed to do. And you will always end up in the wrong place. In other words, you will sin and trespass. Amen? Now, prince means first in line. It means first to rule. So he has a very high authority. It goes, the prince of the power of the air. The NIV says the ruler of the kingdom of the air. So there's the ruler or the prince. There is his kingdom or his power. Then there is his jurisdiction or his arena. So it's like Michael Jordan, amen, is the, has incredible basketball skills on the basketball court. So Satan has incredible power has incredible rulership in the airspace. Yes, the now, the airspace is very simple. It just means this atmosphere. Perfect. So, Satan rules the atmosphere. In fact, the power in Greek is exhousia. Exhousia means authority, jurisdiction, power, strength. So, he is the prince of the power of the air. I'll say it another way. He's the prince of the government of the air. I'll say it another way. He's the prince of his kingdom of the air. He rules there, and he rules there in a very organized, systematic fashion. So now, that, that is a puzzle. What does it mean that he rules the air? Well, what is this government in the air? Well, they have license, they have jurisdiction. What are they, what are they controlling in the air? Because he controls the airspace. Now, we have analogies like this. There, there are regulatory boards that control the airways. Sorry. You know, I learned this, that there are people hired by the government that actually listen to your, what you say on your cell phone. Amen. They are monitoring the airways. Right. You can't just broadcast anything. You have to get a license. Right. Right? So there is a regulatory board. So we know this in a physical analogy. But Satan does this in a spiritual sense. So we need to know he's the prince of the power of the air, or the ruler of the kingdom of the air. And, and we need to know this because the message is actually subtitled, Understanding the Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. The Wi-Fi zone is this airspace. Perfect. There, there's something called a Wi-Fi zone. And the Wi-Fi zone is where, for example, wireless devices Perfect. like my phone or like my computer can operate Perfect. and they can do two things. They can receive information right. and they can broadcast information. That's as simple as it is. Yeah. Right? So your my computer doesn't need a wire. This phone doesn't need a wire. It can receive and broadcast information. So our technology, the informational age that we live in, has finally gotten to a point where we can understand by our technology what Satan is actually able to do. Perfect. Because this cell phone is what your mind uses Perfect. to broadcast or to receive. Yeah. So, for example, say Jackie is thinking. Well, just like a cell phone, right? Now, imagine the cell phone in front of Jackie, and imagine she's going to think about Gloria. Now, mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. Gloria has a cell phone, too. Now, she's going to dial, right? Glory, and then Glory's going to pick up her phone and they can have a conversation. Well, in the same way, her mind yeah. can send Gloria a thought. Perfect. And Gloria can pick that up. Perfect. Now, if you don't believe me, there's research uh, by Daniel Goldman who, who, who coined the phrase Nero Wi Fi. Nero Wi Fi is the Wi Fi of your brain or how your brain can pick up information from the people around you. He's done research that people can pick up the thoughts and the feelings of others. So they did this experiment at Harvard where there's four people in a room and one person comes in the room and this person doesn't say anything and the four are silent. The four think that they're going to go fill out a survey and they're getting paid for it. But the actual test is right there. 
The fifth person comes and sits among them. He is really, really mad. He's, he's trying to be mad. He's thinking rage. He sits there for 15 minutes, and then he leaves. Then the four people write out a survey. And the survey is, how do you feel now as opposed to later? And all of them said, we feel anxious. We feel irritable. We feel worse. So the thoughts and the feelings of that person from their mind had transferred to the other person's what brain. Yeah. From one cell phone to the other yeah. cell phone. Mm -hmm. And it's wireless. Perfect. There's, they, they weren't touching, they were just sitting what? Together. Now this has incredible implications because you need to know the first question is what is the Wi-Fi? Yeah. The Wi-Fi is the wireless zone. I'll say it another way. The thought zone or the thought space where messages, where thoughts are received and broadcast. Amen. Mm -hmm. Have you ever walked in a room and, and, and it's like, or have you ever felt someone and you can kind of tell what they're thinking? Mm -hmm. Or have you ever thought of Pastor Fraser and then you call them and you say, I was just thinking about you? We know this intuitively. Right. But in, in truth, it's also in the Bible. Because Christ repeatedly throughout the scriptures, and I have a whole list of scriptures here, he's repeatedly going like this. And knowing their thoughts, he said to them, Matthew 12, 25. Matt, here's Matthew 9, 4. But Jesus, knowing, seeing their thoughts, said, Why do you think and harbor evil malice in your hearts? You see? And, and it goes on and out. And Luke 5, 22. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts and questions, answered them, Why do you question in your hearts? So Christ is able to pick up, you see, uh, your thoughts. He is able to tap into your transmission. Because like it or not, every time you think, you are sending a thought to someone. So the wireless zone is where messages are received, messages are sent, messages are broadcast. It's yeah. communication. Yeah. Right? Now, this is the prince of the power of the air. So, so say Jackie wants to think about Gloria. And she's sending her thought. Satan has the power because he rules the airspace. He has the power to get in the between. Amen. Everything has an environment. Yeah. Everything. Your thoughts need what? An environment. Your thoughts need it. Fish need an environment. They need water. Your thoughts also need what? An environment. Satan rules that environment because your thoughts have to travel through what? The wireless zone. So he, remember, Satan is diabolical. He always gets in between. So he will get in between Jackie, and he will get, uh, so he'll get position himself directly in between Jackie and Gloria when they're trying to communicate. And this is his, his power of the air. He is able to sense your thoughts. He is able to capture your thoughts. He is able to change your thoughts. So, for example, imagine your email. Imagine um, I send uh, um, Gloria an email. Imagine someone gets in my email, messes it up, and sends it to her. Perfect. And, and every email that she sends me, he also captures it and messes it up. What will happen to our relationship? He will get completely what? Messed up. You see, Satan is not a fool. In warfare, the first thing you do is knock out what? Communication. Yep. When you knock out communication, all the soldiers lose leadership. They lose harmony. They don't know what's going on. They're in the dark. Once, now, now th this is the key of the Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi is the communication that's happening between two points, A and B. Satan gets in between. This is, and this is how it works. So you have to understand the Wi-Fi and you understand how it works. There's always something in between the two points of communication. Here's one cell phone, here's another cell phone. What's in between? The satellite. The satellite. Mm -hmm. Now, God used to be the satellite between Adam and Eve. Amen. When Satan got them to sin and trespass, God moved out as a satellite. And who moved in his place? Satan. So all communication has to pass through what? The satellite. All the mail has to be collected at one spot and then sent out. When you, when you do send your email, it goes to a server, host papa or whatever. It's collected, then it's sent on its way. Now, Satan is, is an interesting collector. 
because he doesn't just collect it. <laughs> he, he it. Yes. yes. He's like, let me reinterpret that. So Jackie is thinking, I so love Gloria. Satan, let me intercept that thought and let me send um, Gloria another thought. Uh, Je Jessica thinks you're a goof. Yeah. You know, Jessica thinks you're rude, or um, Jackie thinks you're rude. He knows that these are having a relationship, so he'll try to twist the thought. Now that's pretty extreme, but he'll he'll bend it in little ways yeah. because he's trying to alter the communication. It's like broken telephone. You tell Satan, Satan tells Gloria. You tell Satan, Satan talks back to Jackie. Satan is deadly. His greatest power is he, he's able to sense thoughts. Yeah. Now, how do we understand this? Yeah, let me use an analogy. Air is like water. They're, they're, they're just different textures. Correct. For, so, for example, if you're in a pool, and I, and I go like this in the pool, I don't know if you've ever done this, Perfect. like they all line up at the shallow and they go like this, and it sends big waves to the deep end. Correct. You can sense the waves. Yeah. A shark can sense the waves. Perfect. Well, in the same way, if I fan you, you can sense what? The wave. Well, in the airspace, guess what? Thoughts also make a motion. Yeah, they cause a the vibration. Yeah. A little mosquito, you may not hear it, but its wings are actually disturbing what? The airspace. It's actually creating a ripple in the stillness. Amen. Satan is an archangel. Christ has this, God has the same power. Satan is so set, he's super sensitive. He has a stethoscope to the hair. <laughs> he is so sensitive that he can sense thoughts coming into the airspace. Because everything travels in what? An environment. And he is, when he senses them, he's able to what? Break in. He's able to capture them. He's able to alter them. So he doesn't just he didn't just break the intel from God. He took over as the intel. That's why in Zion it says, all the sheep have gone astray. They're all going their own way. When intel is broken, the soldiers are like, I don't know what to do. Do you know what to do? I don't know what to do. They all start doing what? Their own thing. So Satan got, broke the communication. Then he said, oh, by the way, let me take over now. So he now started to broadcast to the soldiers a different one. Information. Because he is Diablo. He is the satellite. He is the middleman. If you do not understand this, you don't understand the danger of the place that we live in. Amen. We live in the Wi-Fi zone. In this zone, there's all sorts of traffic. It's like the 401. There's heavy mass, different textures. Right? Bodies and cars and chairs and trucks. There are feelings, which are a lighter texture. There are thoughts, which are even a lighter texture. You see? There is awareness, or the spiritual dimension, which is the lightest texture of all. So there's all this traffic happening in this zone. You see? And these thoughts that are traveling through this zone, that, and everything's occupying the same place, right? These thoughts have different frequencies in the zone. So God has a certain frequency. I'll say it another way. If you want to, if Jackie wants to talk to Gloria, you can have a, a Rogers network, or you can have the Bell network. Right. You can have someone as the satellite. So when I, I have Rogers, so it has to go to Rogers satellite, Rogers servers. Roger is the middleman. I, I can never just call direct. There's always someone what in between. Right. That's why he's the prince of the power of the air. Just like Christ, he can read thoughts. You see? And more dangerous than that, he can alter them and send them to its original sender or he can stop them. He's always trying to mess communication. Yeah, I'll never forget this. I was talking to one of my spiritual sisters. She's not here in the church now. I was talking to her on the phone and I remember saying something with a certain tone and I was in a heightened state because I could see that when it left my mouth and before she heard it, it had altered. The tone had changed. The energy had changed. I could see in my mind's eye, in my spiritual eye, that between me and, and this person, my sister that I was talking to, it had altered. And when she heard it, I could tell she was offended. And I felt like saying, that's not how I sent it. I never understood what had happened. Amen. Something had what? Captured it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Something had altered it. You know all our miscommunication, remember, and communication is three kinds of communication. Mm -hmm. Between ourselves, Amen. with others, and with God. Perfect. If someone is always hacking in, if someone is always getting the letter, do you think you can have good communication? Perfect. Or good relationships. Or good relationships. Perfect. Or clarity. Or commitment. 
or motivation? No, because someone is always messing up what? The thought process. He's always getting in your head. If you are, and, and this is why it's so important to be in God, because once you're in God, you have a different what? Satellite. You have a different server. You have the Bell Network, not the Rogers Network. And God, just like, just like uh, Satan, is also able to sense your thoughts, collect your thoughts, and send your thoughts. The Bible says angels carry the prayers of the saints up to God. So if angels can intercept prayers, demons can also try to intercept <laughs> prayers or thoughts. Amen. That's their power. So you have to understand, just like a shark can sense ripples, so too Satan can sense when the airspace has thoughts traveling through it. It's like when I send my email to Chuck's computer, it's like he's in between going, I got that. And he's very, he's what? He's a master of the airways. He's the prince of the power of the thought zone. He is, um, he's the best at it. He's only second to what? God. Amen. Now, the advantage that God has is that God will cloak your yeah. transmissions. Lock him up. Amen. Mm -hmm. He will secure the frequency. Satan can't get into that frequency. It's like, what, 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 you know, certain, certain cell phones, they'll lock it on channel. Yeah. And no one can get what? In. Correct. So unless you want your thoughts getting hacked in, unless you want the enemy talking to you all the time, and talking to other people that you love, you better get on a secure what? Yeah. Frequency. Network. You better change your network. Amen. Because what God does is, when God senses them and collects them, He protects them. He does not let allow the enemy to what? See into them. Satan cannot pick it up on his radar. Right. When, when they used to have planes, and they covered planes with Teflon. Now, Teflon did not originate with frying pans. Teflon originated in the United States Air Force because when they covered planes with Teflon, the enemy radar could not pick it up. So what God does is he cloaks, he puts Teflon on your thoughts. So that thoughts to him, thoughts about yourself, thoughts to other people. So the enemy is like, he's like, I don't see anything moving. He doesn't move. Because once he picks up the ripple, once he hears the drum beat, he's like what? I'm in on it. Yeah. He, like a shark. Th this is this is why this is why Paul he goes in Romans seven he goes ah, I'm always planning to do the good but I can never carry it out why because someone is getting in on your planning yeah, yeah. if you are not in the right network he's already hearing it in the formation stage so he's also so he's got the the wrong philosophy he's got a, the the army of wrong thoughts prepared for all your thoughts yeah. and and he can do it very very subtly. You know, let me let me give you an example from from victory, uh, victory over darkness. Listen to this conversation that this lady has. She she wants to drive and, and pass by the grocery store and, and, and not get Halloween candy. Now now listen to this. and it's actually from a cartoon strip. Listen to her thought process. Frame one of this cartoon strip. I will take a drive, but I won't go near the grocery store. Frame two. I will drive by the grocery store, but I will not go in. <laughs> Frame three. I go in the grocery store, but will not walk down the aisle where the Halloween candy is on sale. Frame four. I will look at the candy, but not pick it up. Frame five. I will pick it up, but not buy it. Frame six. I will buy it, but not open it. Frame seven. Open it, but not smell it. Frame eight. Smell it, but not taste it. Frame nine. Taste it, but not eat it. Frame ten. Eat, eat, eat. Eat. <laughs> now what's happening in between? <laughs> Satan is picking up the thoughts and what? Sending the opposite. So, there's so much in this message, Lord. I'm going to organize this. When Satan captured man and removed him from the satellite, it's like a it's like it's like an adult with a child. Satan just outboxes your mind. He just beats you down with thoughts. Faster talk, quicker talk, everything. Yeah, he sends the fiery missiles. He can do it subtly. He can do it not subtly. He is a master. He, he, your mind cannot think as fast as his mind. He can send you. That's why he said the enemy comes in what? Like a floodgate. 
He yeah, can, he, he has every, it, it's, like, it's like you're fighting and you only know two techniques. You know a block and you know a punch. Perfect. And he has a right cross, and he, has a, he has a spin kick, and he has a, a you know, he, he can knee you and he can jump up and, you know, slap you on the back of your head. He has all these techniques and you have one. And, and no one is stopping him because you're in the wrong server. God is not protecting you. He beats you what? Silly. He simply outboxes your mind. He sees what your mind is planning and he already has four steps ahead. He's the master chess player. He is listening in. If you are an unprotected line, he's privy to all your what? Your information. This is why Paul said, I am baffled. I am bewildered. I'm planning to do something I can never do because someone's in on your plan. Someone, he's, because, now, if, unless you're possessed, now, now there's laws of the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Say there's laws of the Wi-Fi. There's, there's laws, laws of, of the, the Wi-Fi. Wi Once your thoughts leave your mind and they go into the airspace, once you speak and it's traveling through the air, airwaves, yeah. you see, anybody can read it if it's not protected. Yeah. Satan so can read it, God can read it. Perfect. So that's the outside laws, yeah. the airspace laws, the outer space laws. It, there's also inside laws. Amen. Inside you, God can only hear you inside if he has his spirit in you. Because the Bible says only the spirit of man knows the thoughts of a man. Perfect. It's the same with Satan though. Perfect. If Satan is inside you, possessing you, he can all already hear your thoughts oh, inside <laughs> as well as outside. But if you are not possessed, he can only hear them when they what? Come out. Perfect. When they manifest. Right? So there's outer laws and inner laws. Amen. And remember, if you want to be totally protected from Satan, Christ has to be in you. Yeah. And he has to deliver you from any demonic pub. If, if, if Christ is occupying you and Satan is not possessing you, then if you're not in the right network, that's why the Bible says, remain in me, then he can what? Also pick it up in the airspace. But if you're in God, if you got the right server, the Bell network, not the Rogers network, then Satan cannot hear you because it's what? Cloaked. It's secure. That now you understand why Christ said you gotta watch. <laughs> what are you watching? You're watching for the penetration of what? His thoughts. You know? mm -hmm. Right? So you're watching for two things because a cell phone and mind can do two things. It can receive and it can what? Broadcast. Send. You know? mm -hmm. It can receive and it can what? Send. So I have to guard, protect the reception. Make sure that I, I, I'm, not, I'm not open. Because once I get a lot of thoughts that are confusing me and conflicting me, guess what? Jesus. Yeah. It, you know, now, it could be coming inside you because maybe the flesh is alive. But, but if you're in the Spirit, the Spirit will suppress the flesh. So you ever hear this? Ever, ever be still and realize that thought is not in me. That thought is coming what? Perfect. Around me. Yeah. Because remember, the neural Wi-Fi. The neural Wi-Fi is this. Thoughts and feelings are viral. You can catch them. Somebody's upset or something. Amen. Yes, you can pass them on. So Satan is always trying to pass. He's always trying to pass the virus onto you. It's not a healthy thought. It's an infected thought. Amen. You see? So we have to be watching and on guard that I'm in God. You see? And God is protecting me. God is helping me take every thought captive so that the receiving is what? Not info what? Trade. I'm not getting the enemy's what? Perfect. Reception. This is why you have to abide in him. This is why you have to watch. But I also have to protect the outgoing. I have to protect the broadcast. And that's why he said, let your yes be yes, yes and your no be no. no. Why? Because if, my, if I'm indecisive, okay? Now, if I'm indecisive, if I'm thinking a lot, if I, if I take a long time to make a decision, what am I doing in the airspace? I'm making a lot of noise. I'm rippling. I'm beating the drum. You're a shark in the water. You're bleeding, bleeding. I'm bleeding left and right. And, this, and he can what? Sense it. He can sense it. He can sense it. And once he senses it, he's like, what? You're thinking? Let me what? Tune in. Let me tune in. So the best thing is to stay in God. But just in case you're careless and you come out of God, and you're in the Wi-Fi, then you better be what? Short, quick, precise. Why? Because he will tune in. Perfect. But if it's, if it's short, quick, it's like a ripple on the radar. It's like, if he has time, if, 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 if you talk a lot and continuous, and you're like, I don't know what to do. Maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do that. I, I, I don't know what philosophy to follow. Yes, no. If, if you're thinking a lot, if you're indecisive, 
he has a lot of time yeah. to figure out where did that come from, where is it going, yeah. and what are they saying, let me intercept, rearrange it. <laughs> Amen. You're giving them lots of time to penna trades. Amen. You see, if you're in the spirit, God will always warn you. Say, stop doing that. He will see if you don't just obey the word of God, which is let your yes be no be no, then you better understand the why why. Everything that God tells you to let your yes be yes, your no be no, anything else from the enemy, that is a command. Perfect. That is a positive. You need to do this. Yeah. But the question is why? Yes. Amen. Let your yes be yes, your no be no, anything else is from the enemy, is simply this. Any hang time, Perfect. any lingering in the air, Satan will intercept it. For, for example, you know, Jackie wants to call uh, Gloria, or Jackie wants to think about Gloria. Imagine Jackie wants to throw a football to Gloria. Now, if Jackie throws it really, really high in the air, like a pop fly, then the other team can what? Get there. Intercept it. Yes. Yes. Time to get it yes. <laughs> so just in case you're not on the secure network, just in case God is not cloaking you, you see, I want you to develop good communication habits. So dark. First of all, stay in me. Why stay in me? So that you can't hear so that you can't hear Satan. Because if you're out of the network, you're hearing all sorts of scrambled messages. You're wide open. Your cell phone can pick up all sorts of things. You see? So not only do you need to stay in him, but you need to develop good habits of what? Transmission. Amen. If you don't stay in him, you can hear the enemy. And if you don't broadcast properly according to the broadcast rules, let your yes be yes, your no be no, then Satan can what? Hear you. Are you hearing Satan? And is he hearing you? When you're just trying to uh, figure out what to do, is the enemy getting in? And when you're broadcasting, is he picking it up? Because he's the satellite. This is why it's so important to watch and pray. This is why let your yes be yes, you know, we know. This is why we have to abide in him. There's reason. God is not just saying, okay, stay in me, don't talk a lot, for fun. No, there's a reason. Unless you want to be infiltrated, unless you want to be confused and perplexed, like Paul, I don't know why I can't do the things I want to do. If you don't know why, you know, your relationships are messed up, and your relationship with yourself, and your relationship with others, your relationship with God, is because you do not know the importance of what? The Word of God. That's what Satan does. He's the prince of the power of the air. Amen. At one time you walked habitually. You were following the course and the fashion of this world. We're under the prey of the tendency of this present age. Following the prince of the power of the air. So Satan loves it if you are in an unprotected line. Satan loves it if you have an unprotected line. If you have the wrong network. And Satan loves it if you like to be indecisive. He likes it if you have an unprotected mind because he can send you his thoughts. And he loves it if you like are indecisive because he can pick up your thoughts. That's what he does. And that's why God is all. But God loves it when you're what? Remain in him, let him control, let him modify. Because what, what the Holy Spirit does is the Holy Spirit will collect your thoughts. He will modify your thoughts. Remember, the Spirit intercedes with what? Moans and groans. The Spirit will always lead you to all truth. The Holy Spirit will tell you, no, don't take that thought. Take that thought captive. No, let this thought go. Because you have the power to what? Reject and accept thoughts. So if the Holy Spirit is your server, is your satellite, it will always guide you into the proper reception of thoughts and the proper way to what? Broadcast thoughts. See, let, let, let me give you this analogy. Imagine you're in the basement, right? Now, in the basement, now the whole house is the Wi-Fi zone. But in the Wi-Fi, there are different regions. In the basement, in your basement, it's, it's, sometimes it's hard to pick up your cell phone. The, the, the reception is bad, so you get scrambled messages. That's when you're using the Wi-Fi, when you just brought when you're outside of God. No, you don't want to be in the basement, you want to be what? On the first floor. On the first floor, there's something called a landline. This is a secure line. This is when God is your server. So if you're in the basement, realize that you're always getting scrambled messages. Because just like your lungs breathe in air and exhale air, so too your mind, what does it do in the atmosphere? It breathes in thoughts and it what? 
Release. Exhale thoughts. If these thoughts are polluted, what do you think they do to you? They pollute you. And, and if they pollute you, and you talk to other people, and if they're not careful, you will also pollute what? Others. Amen. Satan's whole game is this. Because he can infiltrate your thoughts, and because he broadcasts thoughts, you have the power to change the atmosphere. Amen. You have the power to change what? The Wi-Fi. Amen. Have you ever seen the movie um, um, Finding Nemo? In Finding Nemo, they're, they're in the fishbowl, and they're trying to get the, the girl to clean the fishbowl. But to clean the fishbowl, it has to be dirty. So they're, they're trying to get the fishbowl dirty. And in Finding Nemo, they go like this, let's think really dirty thoughts. <laughs> they somehow knew that if they think dirty, the water gets what? Dirty. In the same way, when we think dirty, that's why the, the Bible says focus on these things that are virtuous, that are good, that are excellent, that are praiseworthy. We pollute our what? Own environments. Mm -hmm. Amen. We, and, and this is, an, what, what is man doing to the earth? Perfect. Well, what did, what did the Industrial Revolution, we are pumping greenhouse gases and carbon dioxide and toxic chemicals. In the same way, we are also what? Polluting the airspace with what? Our thoughts. But there's a problem when we pollute the airspace with our thoughts. What are we going to breathe? Because just like the lungs breathe oxygen, our mind breathes what? Yeah. Thoughts. Mm -hmm. If it's polluted oxygen, I'm going to breathe it in, I'm going to exhale, I'm going to die of emphysema. Amen? This is why we, we, the, 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 they ban smoking, because you can get secondhand smoke. So you may not be thinking bad, but if you don't help the problem, you'll, you'll, you'll eat, eat that secondhand smoke. Yeah. In the same way, our minds have to what? Live in an environment. When the presence of God or the kingdom of God, and when you're on the first floor, the airspace becomes purified, and the mind has access to what? Pure thoughts. Yeah. Good thoughts. This is how he starts to what? Renew your mind. Both inside you, because the Holy Spirit is working in you, and both what? Outside of you. That's why it's so important every morning when you get up, before you have to go out into that world, that you renew your mind, refresh your mind, because you know that no matter what, Satan, his job is to disturb you. Yes. And he's going to come. I, I saw him so many times when I was away, only at first, because even though I had renewed myself, ready for the day, but stepped into a situation with a different culture than what I'm used to, and Satan just started to like throw things, and then I had enough wisdom and knowledge to stop and say, no, 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 those are not my thoughts, those are the devil's yeah. thoughts. <laughs> Where are your thoughts? And then the Lord spoke and said, you're prepared? Perfect. Use it. Perfect. And In the morning, you were on the, the secure frequency. In the zone, there's different frequencies. You're in the secure frequency, the secure line. You're on the bell network. But when you left, the Bible, if you read on, it goes, they were careless. But if you become careless, you can switch what? Over. Yeah. You do not want to be on the wrong network. You don't want to be on an insecure, unprotected line. And if you are on an insecure, unprotected line, you don't want to be making a lot of noise in the basement because he'll pick you up. So that's why Christ's strategy was brilliant. Look, it, you guys are supposed to be in me. But just in case you're careless and you come out of me, I want you to have good communication habits. Why? The enemy will pick you up. Let you guess. Make it short, precise. In other words, if you think about Gloria, send a thought and go over there. Perfect. Don't delay. Because he's what? In between, picking it up. If you go, I should go see Gloria. I shouldn't see that's Gloria. Okay. I like Gloria. I don't like Gloria. The, the enemy is going, da, 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 da. he's tracking it. He's like, where did that come from? It's right. Jackie. Where is it going? What's she thinking? Glory. Okay, what are they saying? Got it. Okay, and then, guess what? He starts his what? Funny business. Mm -hmm. Amen. In the old days, they would capture the messenger, between the horse rider between two kingdoms, alter the message, and would mess up what? War. Yeah. They were great. They would start war. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Would, would you like it if I got into your email? Would you like it if anybody got into your email? Why? Because they are privy to private information. They can really mess up. So Satan does, doesn't just send you random thoughts. He sends you specific thoughts based on what you are thinking and based who you are thinking towards. Mm -hmm. He gets you in the planning phase. Amen. This is why if you like to think a lot, or if you like to be indecisive, or if you don't like to be in God, you're what? It's a hellacious beating. Amen. He, satellites are above the earth. Yeah. So, so Satan is like a satellite. He's above the earth. So he's very clear of what he's doing. He's yeah. not confused. 
But he is getting you confused. Yep. And the more confused, the more wrong thoughts you think, and the more wrong thoughts you receive, and the wrong, more wrong thoughts you broadcast, pretty soon the whole atmosphere is what? Polluted with what? Wrong. That's why the Bible says, dense darkness covers the earth. It is a perfect atmosphere for Satan to rule because he's the first ruler to have a kingdom of what? Darkness. Yeah. Darkness. Well, when Christ gets you, it's like you're a deep sea diver. He hooks, you know, ever see those old deep sea divers with a metal suit? He hooks the air hose back to the top of the boat. So even though Satan is, is hovering above, what God is above him. Perfect. God is something called in something called the third heavens. Satan is something called the second heavens. He's a prince uh, of the power of the air. There's powers, principalities there in, in heavenly, the heavenly supernatural sphere. And then there's the uh, first heaven or the earth. Yeah. So he acts as a satellite in second heaven. But when Christ gets a hold of you, he links you up. He puts a hose down. And suddenly you operate in the light of the Lord. Perfect. Suddenly you operate in a protected transmission. Suddenly your satellite server has changed from Satan in second heaven to God in what? Third heaven. Perfect. Christ relinks your server. He changes you from the Rogers network, the Rogers satellite, to the Bell network. The Bell satellite. Amen. Amen. And that's the tremendous advantage of God. This is why we're at such peace. Why are we at such peace all the time? Because Satan cannot penetrate us with his agitating thoughts, his conflicting thoughts, his lustful thoughts, his angry thoughts. His, because those thoughts have a frequency. Those thoughts have a weight. Correct. They hold you down. They depress your spirit. And then yeah. the virus. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and he will try. Yeah. God. Perfect. Every day. Everything begins with a thought. Every problem begins with what? A thought. And every problem that sticks around has thoughts as a stronghold. A repetitive pattern of thoughts that you have ingested and Satan is trying to stimulate from what? Outside you. Amen. So if you don't like to stay in God and you like to blah, 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 guess what? He can send you thoughts and he can pick up your thoughts. He is the mind reader. He's the prince of the power of the air waves. Amen. Oh yeah, he's only, only like those people, Joe, they're all really stupid. Like, yeah, I have to tell them to get their work done. Yes. Uh, yeah. Well, this, this is why, we, this, why, why, why in the morning does, does he want you to commune? Because he wants you to get used to this frequency and get used to the thoughts that are broadcast on that frequency. So the frequency is the state, the vibration, right? Remember, we need to be in a proper state. The proper state means my mind, my heart, and my body are aligned with God. And when you're aligned with God, you will vibrate at a certain frequency. Everything is as a frequency. Everything is vibrating. So when things are moving through space, they have movement within themselves. So for example, if I move from there to there, and I have a basketball, if I move very fast, I have to bounce the basketball what? Faster. faster. If I move very slow, I, have to, I, can, I can bounce the basketball slower. So our thoughts and our beings carry a vibration. The higher vibrations are closer to God. They are higher. They are faster. Amen? The, the lower vibrations are heavier, thicker. They have a weight. They slow you Amen. down. Amen. Satan wants you in those vibrations because he's on that frequency. <laughs> God is on the higher frequency. So when you think thoughts of depression and shame and guilt and fear and lust, guess what? Those are lower frequency. Satan, mm -hmm. Satan goes, I rule those frequencies. Amen. You're able to hear me, and I'm able to hear you. Let's have a big tent. A tent. Let's pollute the atmosphere. Let's create dense darkness. Amen. Uh, sorry, I'm going to tune you up now. You're off. Yes, that's why God has to renew the entirety of your mind. Just like your lungs can die of emphysema, so your mind can die from what? Yes. The polluted thought space. Amen. People are not bad. They're just breathing in and breathing out what? Yes. All the wrong thoughts. They are dying from the secondhand smoke. They weren't bad as children. They came in this world, but they grew up in an atmosphere of what? Pollution. Perfect. And if what you take in, that's the only thing you can what? Take out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen? So that's why God has to live inside you to clean the inside, and why God has to hook you up to the third heavens to clean what? The outside. You become purified. You become a purifier. In fact, your frequency starts to dissolve, destroy all what? The other frequencies. The, the eagle is able to eat all the chickens. 
You see, your frequency, when it's broadcast, it has the power to dominate all other frequency. It is authorized at this frequency. So when I'm receiving from God, and I speak diastomos, guess what? That word has the power of what? Where that frequency destroys what? All other intel in the area. Amen. That's why prayer night is so important, because God is having us what? Broadcast. Perfect. Because God cannot help the people in the world directly, because they're not in covenant with Him. Not you can't protect them. Not on their you, you can't modify their thoughts so their prayers are right. He, he can't leave them. Landline. They don't have a landline. Mm -hmm. You see, so the only thing he can do is clear the space around them by prayer, mm -hmm. by declaration. Yeah. Thailand, you are completely sanctified in the name of Jesus. Perfect. I send love and peace and joy to Africa. Perfect. You see, you are yeah. broadcasting God's thoughts. And these thoughts destroy what? The lower thoughts, these higher thoughts, these high vibrational thoughts, you see? Because darkness, the lower thoughts cannot appropriate the light. These higher thoughts will destroy the lower thoughts. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen? You, you have to know where you live. Amen. Do you live in the basement? Perfect. Or do you live on the first floor? If you live in the basement, you're hearing messed up things all the time. This is the dense darkness. But if you live in the main floor, the airspace around you is always what? Clear. That's why people, see people used to always say this, at the, at the cave, people always used to want to stand beside him. Why? They're enjoying his what? His airspace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Atmosphere. The atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's so peaceful. It's so still. I can breathe. The Bible says, come into the presence of God. Get refreshment from the heat. What heat? The barrage of negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. The infiltration. The modification. The reinterpretation. You know, I made an image of God. Maybe I'm not. You know, it, he's always changing it. Whatever you think, he, he's got a second opinion. Yeah, always. <laughs> always. And, and it's not always direct, like, like we were reading. It can be subtle. It can be subtle. But by the end of the day, you're in the ditch. By the end of the day, you have a spirit Weird. of heaviness, <laughs> yep. not a garment of praise. Mm. <laughs> by the end of the day, your mind is infected. If your mind gets infected, it infects your soul. Yep. If your soul gets infected, it infects not only your, can it not only oppress your spirit, it can also infect what? Your body. body. Mm. And the atmosphere around you. And the atmosphere, atmosphere around you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Satan's ultimate control is what? The environment. Amen. Environment is stronger than willpower. Amen. Christ was in the boat with his disciples, right? Mm. Right? Now imagine you're in a rowboat, right? And, and the winds and the water are picking up, and you're trying to head to Toronto Island. If those winds and the water are pushing you awake, are you stronger than those winds and the water? Perfect. You're dreaming. You're not stronger. So without Christ protecting you and calming the waters, you'll never get to Toronto Island because the winds and the water, the thoughts and the feelings that Satan is broadcasting to you that are specifically designed for you because he's picking you up will never allow you to move. The waves keep coming. There's no way you can ever get there. Amen. Ever try to do something? It's like, no matter how, I don't have enough willpower. I just can't do it. This is Paul. It's not willpower, because the whole environment is fighting your very thoughts. Because your, your will is trying to get you to carry out this thought. But Satan is outboxing your mind and go, oh, you think your will is strong. Watch my will. I'm the prince of the power of the air. Yeah, right. Demon in sector four, demon in sector five, demon in sector six. They all start what? Unburdens. Sending you thoughts. Sending you winds and water. Your boat goes the other way. Yeah. As hard as you try to think, you have to, I'm going to do this. No, 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 no. Yes. No, 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 no. You'll never get there. He's too powerful. You need God to protect you. Amen. You need God to strengthen you and to make you what? Go forward. That's what he does. That's what he does. So when Peter woke him up from the bottom of the boat, what did Christ do? Christ goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. I control this thought space. He's the prince of the power of the air, but I'm the king of kings of the air. I rule everything. everything. Amen? That's why the Bible says at, at the end, it says he will come at the end, in the second coming, how does he come? On the clouds, in the air. Yeah. In other words, he's coming, and when he comes, you'll know, because he'll dominate the thought space. Perfect. The thoughts will be broadcast everywhere in the thought space, in the ether. Everyone will be going, hey, I think Jesus is coming. Perfect. Everybody will be picking up what? The intel. Amen. It doesn't necessarily mean that he's visually in a cloud and everyone can see him. It means he's going to dominate that what Satan used to dominate, now God will what? Dominate. Amen. Right? So God wants everyone to have the Holy Ghost, and God wants everyone to breathe what? 
clean oxygen, mm. not dirty water. People are dying in Africa because they're drinking dirty water. People are dying because they're breathing uh, like radioactive air. You see, people are dying because they're taking in what? Wrong thoughts. And what? Speaking wrong thoughts. Amen. You see, it's not, it's, it, it's your thoughts that kill you. That's where it starts. Yes. As a man thinketh, so shall that what? Be. This is Satan's power. You see? It goes so. In which at one time you walked habitually, you were following the course and the fashion of this world, were under the sway of the tendency of this present age, following the prince of the power of the air. You were obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit, right? So you're under his control because he can pick up your thoughts, rearrange your thoughts, amen, and control you through those thoughts. That still constantly works in the sons of disobedience, the careless, the rebellious, the unbelieving, who go against the purposes of God. So you can't afford to be careless with watching and praying. You can't afford to be careless to be out of the presence of God. You can't afford to be careless and not let your yes be yes and your no be no. Amen. Amen? God, if you can't stay in God, then please, if you're in the basement. Supposing, supposing you're in church, but then you have to go to work and you get all flustered and everything, you know. You know don't be thinking, thinking, thinking. It's bad enough that you're out of God. Don't let him pick you up. Don't let the bloodhound sniff you. Don't let the shark sense the ripple in the water. Don't beat the drum. You know, when you get, when I get tired, my mind wants to think. I'm like, yeah, why don't you just say, Satan, come kiss me? <laughs> you know what I mean? The shark, come and eat me. You know, he's just broadcasting. Here I am, here I am, Prince of the Power of the Air, come infiltrate me. Come give me polluted thoughts. You wake up with a headache. You wake up, why am I thinking this gross thought? Hallelujah. He loves to plant the seeds and you will what? Grow them. <laughs> So you don't want to be disobedient. You don't want to be careless. You don't want to be rebellious. You don't want to be unbelieving because the enemy will mess you up. Oh, God. He gives you a hellacious... People in the world are not bad. They are being controlled by a prince Wide of open. the power of the air. He's getting into all their email. He's getting into all their thoughts. He's getting into all their relationships. He's getting into all their communication. And he is giving them a twisted communication. And worst of all, they keep broadcasting. Where many words are sin is not absolute deprecation. Yeah. Well, why is sin is not? Why are there many words? Because you are telling him where you are. He can physically see you, but he can't pick you up unless he possesses you or unless you what? Think. Think. Especially if you're what? Unprotected. If you're out of the presence. Hallelujah. Yes. To go against the purposes of God. Amen. So I hope you're clear on, on, on what the Wi-Fi is and, and how important it is to stay in God. Amen. And how important it is to watch your broadcast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Stay on the one channel. Mm -hmm. I was just picturing like a, you know how you have thought clouds? Like when you are just thinking thought clouds like parts mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So it's like so the more you think, the bigger the cloud is, so the yes. bigger target you are yes. for the enemy. Yes. So it's like, oh, you know. Yes. On the radar screen, you aren't Teflon coated. On the radar, see, they found that when you put Teflon, they can't pick you up. Wow. Yeah. So, for example, you know, uh, Sid was giving this example to me when he was helping me understand this. There's a movie called Crimson Tide. And Crimson Tide, you know, it's, it has Gene Hackman and, and some other great stars. It's, it's their U.S. submarine versus a Russian submarine. You know? Now, I, I love movies like this yeah. because in the submarine movie, the, the trick is they can't make any noise. Yeah, man, Why? They're like the the radar picks it yeah. up. Yeah. In fact, in fact, you know, when the second, you know, lieutenant or you know, the, the galley boy drops the cup, they're like. Kill my daddy! You know why? Because he just told everyone, he just told the Russian submarine where we are. Yeah. So he's like, okay, it's too late, we can't kill him. What are we gonna do now? Yeah. You know what I mean? No, the, the jig is up. Now we gotta what? Get the heck out of there! Because he's gonna sense you. Yeah. But when you start to move, guess what? He's also gonna be able to pick you up. Yeah. So you gotta go deeper even now yeah. so his radar can't, because the radar has a certain range. Perfect, yes. perfect. Yes. So when, when you're, if you can't fly Teflon, you know they found that uh, when that Teflon light can't pick it up. But if you put decals on it, guess what? They can pick it up. So if you're not going to fly Teflon, if, if you're going to have lots of decals on your plane and you're going to talk a lot, guess what? Satan can what? Pick it up. It up. 
Mm -hmm. It's bad enough you're in the basement. It's bad enough you're in the region of the Wi-Fi that he controls because he's a prince of it. Don't be a blabbermouth in the basement. <laughs> Don't be a big mouth. It doesn't help you. That's why God is always saying, shh, be still, shh, you're in the crimson tide. Shh, don't talk, the Russian submarine's gonna kill you. you in in fact, Pastor, yeah. that, is, that was the thing. They, they were getting communication, but because the ship is there, they have to drop a loaf. Yeah. And they can't come up high enough to get communication, and they can't, um, so they, they, they're, right. you know the movie, their head office was trying to communicate to them, yeah. but they can't come up in the zone <laughs> where they couldn't get the information, because the sub is above them, you know what I mean? So they were in this weird place where they're like, they go, we need to know what head office is saying, like if we go up, we're dead, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he's just circling on top, you get sooner or later, they have to come up, perfect. In, in other words, if you're in the basement, Say, say, say I'm caught in the basement, say I'm in a bad state, uh, I don't know, um, Jackie yelled at me and I let it get to me and I'm in a bad state and I, I'm tired and I start to think and I know I'm in the basement, I know I'm out of the state, I know I'm out of the presence, I gotta go to myself, note to self, Lord grant me the grace to shut up <laughs> and grant me the grace to get to a secure place, I got to shut up. And I gotta get to the presence of God. So I'll finish my work. I won't say anything to anybody. I'll Amen. run home, get to prayer. What? Right away. Amen. Call someone to unite in faith. Right away. Amen. I gotta get cleaned up. So if you're in enemy airspace, if you're on the crimson tide, for God's sakes, don't what? Make noise. Get in the Teflon coated uh, boat. That's the best thing. Amen. Get in the Teflon coated submarine. That's the best thing. If you can't, and you're on the wrong submarine. Don't be mopping and singing and, you know, you know, and the general's going, what are you doing? All radar silent. Why don't you put up a flag? <laughs> you know, in the meantime, this, you know, the, the, the missile is coming, you know, the torpedoes are coming, <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're an empty headed fool, you don't even know what's going on. You know what man is like? I'm sure all of you guys saw Lion King. Yeah. You remember the, the pig Pumbaa? Yeah. He wanted to draw all the lion out. So he dressed up himself like an um, <coughs> like a suckling, and he got if you want a big um, suckling pig. He's not a large man. He's not eager. He might as well paint a big target uh, on me. Yeah. They say, come and infiltrate. <laughs> come and give me polluted thoughts, which become polluted feelings, which become That's polluted it. actions. Yeah. You see, listen. Every thought creates a feeling. Every feeling creates a physical response. Every physical response creates an action that determines your destiny. Effect, yeah. Unless you want to be have wrong thoughts, wrong feelings, wrong actions, wrong destiny, well then, you know, go for it. Don't, you know, don't get in the Teflon coated sub. Get on the unprotected sub and make lots of noise. Don't go on the main floor with the protected landline. Go in the basement. Get out of the right state. Get out of the presence. And just go nuts. Just think and think. I'm thinking about Jill and I'm thinking about this and maybe I should go here. Maybe I should do that. Go on vacation. That. It's a hellacious beating. Yeah. It's brutal. It's brutal. Yeah. He's got a line into you. And, and this is the real secret. Once he gets a line into you and he keeps that line open, he formats you for him to what? Yeah. Cross over. Yeah. He possesses you yeah. because you are vibrating. You are creating a temporary atmosphere in the Wi-Fi zone that, is, that can host him. Amen. But the Bible said things like this, don't get drunk. It's a bar treat. Mm -hmm. It's self-sabotage. Yes. You put yourself in a state where, like, like, like Pumba, come get me, I'm a juicy porky, or come get me. <laughs> There's no defense. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're done. You're done. It's just, 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 yeah. I'm also picturing like that, you know, that story about the frog that goes into hot water yeah, and then they just slowly, slowly turn it up. He's very good at that. Yes. Gradually so, sets your... So sometimes it's not perfect. always like so black and white like, yeah. you know, Satan, yeah. the Lord rebukes thee. It's, it's like, it's like uh, the more you think, the higher the temperature goes. Perfect. Like you, boil, you start to boil yourself. Perfect. Mm -hmm. You can, remember, you can alter your atmosphere inside and then what? Outside. If you think wrong, feel wrong, you create an inner atmosphere that is disturbed. Mm -hmm. And as you speak and as you think, you broadcast this and disturb others. This is why it's neural Wi-Fi. They can pick it what? Yeah. Up. <laughs> right? So Satan is broadcasting, and you are also broadcasting. Yeah. And if you keep broadcasting, and he gets a hook in you, if you have something in common with him, something that belongs to him, something that he can reclaim to, 
He has a right eventually because you are vibrating in his frequency as well. Enter. Mm -hmm. This is how, this is why demons possess people. This is why demons will get the parents to format the kids. Yeah. Then the demons will move from the parents when yeah. they die onto yes. what? The children. Of course. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's how we first. Yeah. It's like that woman I told you about in Cuba that yes. I, I sat and I would watch her and watch her and wonder, why is she like that? Why is she always talking, 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 talking? And she doesn't know which way she's going and she's all over the place. And then when the knowledge came to me, it was like, oh, because you're serving two gods. Maybe Perfect. your mind is not set in one place. It, you, it doesn't know where to go. Perfect. Perfect. You see? And, and that's Satan. Satan's ultimate goal is to create an inner atmosphere create an outer atmosphere where he can come on the earth. Perfect. Mm -hmm. He can possess the people. God does what? The exact same yeah. thing. He's trying to create an inner atmosphere and an outer atmosphere yeah. where what? The kingdom of heaven can come what? Okay. To, earth. Yeah. to earth. So get out of that bad zone that's unprotected and don't have bad communication habits. Right? I always had bad communication. Oh, the you gotta, you gotta make sure that you stay in God. And if you stay in God, see, the, if you like to talk, don't be in the basement. If you like to talk, you better go to God. But here's the paradox: if you go to God, He makes you talk less. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because you can't hear Him. You're too busy blabbing. Yeah, and when Satan tries to tell you to, to talk, just say, "Lord, shut me up." Mm -hmm. Pastor, when you wrap up, I want to share something. This is for the church. Now, I love this process. It's perfect. I'm very <coughs> clear, and I hope you are benefiting. But there's an expectation on kingdom citizens how to navigate. And um, 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 this is our reality to a certain degree, or another reality, forgive me, Father. As Pastor Thomas is administering, this is the, um, the state we are experiencing. But part of being kingdom citizen, you have to know how to change it. And there are wonderful opportunities <coughs> and expectations from God upon kingdom citizens. Amen. Giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified and made us fit to share the portion, which is the inheritance of the saints, God's holy people in the light. Amen. Now, how do we get our inheritance? How do we get that glory, the blessing, the promises, the, the peace, the love, the joy that are in the heavenly realms or in our spirit? Now, look at verse 13. The Father has delivered and drawn us out, us to himself, out of the control and the dominion of darkness. Amen. So Satan's dominion of darkness is based on controlling the environment, yeah. based on controlling the Wi-Fi zone or the thought space. Because the more polluted thoughts you have, the more you think like him, the more he controls you, the more he can, you can become a host for him. Perfect. Uh, just like God wants you to be a host for him, so too Satan wants you to be what? A host. I'm an instrument. Amen. Amen. Yes, because once you're hosted, that thing starts to what? Control you. Most people think they're free in the world. They're not free. They're not free. They're not free. <laughs> because they... Because the problem with, with dwelling in, 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 with anything long enough, we have something called desensitization. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We get used to it. Yeah. People yeah. get used to the bad airspace. They get used to negative thought. Yeah. They get used to being unfaithful. Yeah. They get be, being used to being polluted and polluting others. Yeah. They're used to it. It's normal to them. They grew up in it. It's perfect. Amen? And so any other way is foreign to them. Amen. So, so God delivers us out of the, he delivers us out of the prince of the power there. That satellite can no longer sense, capture, or interpret, or modify your thoughts anymore. Your communication to yourself becomes clear. I love myself. I am made in the image of God. Nothing interferes with that. I love Jessica. She is an awesome sister in the name of Jesus. Nothing interferes with that anymore. God is a good God. He is, he's allowing me to go through trials and temptations to strengthen me. He enlarges me in my distress. Mm. Nothing disturbs what? That thought process. Yeah. There's no other intel. Everything becomes clear. Everything becomes one way. Everything becomes harmonized. Everything becomes unified. No one is giving you what? Another dialogue. Satan cannot be able. Yeah. Because you have another satellite controlling what? The relay of thinking. Every time you think, it can go back to you, you can go to glory, it can go to God. Perfect. When you are under the control, he's intercepting everyone. Mm -hmm. You're in his space, yeah. you like the blab a lot. He's the prince. Yeah. So when you're in his space, you're breathing his negative thoughts. And when you're blabbing a lot, he zones in on you. Yeah. Gotcha. See you. Yeah. 
He knows exactly what you're doing. He knows exactly what you're thinking. He's a step ahead of you. Because before you manifest, he's always, always sending you what? The thoughts and feelings that stop that manifestation. He goes, and has transfers into the kingdom of the Son of his love. In whom we have a redemption through his blood, which means the forgiveness of sins. So God's broadcast is always you are forgiven. Any, any broadcast that says you're condemned or other people are condemned is what? A lying broadcast. Mm -hmm. Something is intercepting your thoughts, changing your thoughts, because you're trying to pray in the Spirit, you're trying to read the Word of God, something is what? Getting in. Amen. Mm -hmm. Getting in. You've got to know that you have right standing. Right standing means this. I have a right to the kingdom of God as my satellite dish. I have a right to God protecting me on the outside and rising up on me on the inside. And this is what it is. And look at the last one. Now he is the exact likeness of the unseen God, the visible representation of the invisible. He is the firstborn of all creation. So God's broadcast is always about your forgiveness is all about your transformation. Satan is always trying to get you condemned. He does not want you to change. He does not want you to be the visible representation of the invisible. Satan controls the invisible from coming out to the visible because he gets in on the invisible through wrong thoughts. Amen. You can't release your invisible spirit unless you have the right intel, Amen. the right intelligence, the right information. So if you can't get this right information and move it from your mind into your heart out of your mouth, guess what? The spirit can't rise. So he's always stopping the knowledge. That's why he says, I'll give you the knowledge of the glory. What is God changing first? He's not, he's not just releasing the glory. He says, I'll fill the earth with what? The knowledge of the glory. Because unless you get the knowledge in your mind, in your heart, out of your mouth, you see, and doing that knowledge, taking action towards it, you can't release the invisible glory and make it what? Visible on earth. Amen. And, and this is the question. If you're not doing that, what are you making visible? What you're making visible is what he has programmed. Because he's programmed another nature, not the spirit of God. He's programmed what? The flesh. So we were talking about the flesh before, but today we're talking about what? The mind. Amen. The mind. Because the mind has to switch from the flesh to the spirit. But the mind cannot switch to the flesh if it can't focus on what? The right information. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, so whenever you're in wrong enemy airspace or you, you can't or, or, or you can't shut your mouth. This is when you can say, okay, Lord, thank you. I am delivered from the dominion of darkness. The enemy is not supposed to control my thoughts in any way. Thank you for the grace to take every thought captive. Thank you, Father, that you are protecting me as I abide in you. Father, I call for the right to forgiveness. I call for the right to transformation. Christ never had allowed anyone of the enemy's thoughts in. Even when they tried to, he goes like this to Peter. I rebuke you, Satan. Yeah. Satan had infiltrated Peter. And Peter was now what? Broadcasting. But Christ picked it up. He goes, no, 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 no. That's not you, Peter. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm calling you Satan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You are broadcasting the enemy. You're not, your mind is not on the things of God. Your mind, mm -hmm. your cell phone has been infiltrated by what? The wrong satellite. Yeah. You switched networks. Yeah. Remember, when, you, when you're in the wrong network, you always have the right to switch what? To the other one. Yeah. Choice. This is what we're always watching for. Yeah. Because yeah. if I'm not watching and praying about this, then I'm always hearing negative thoughts all around me. And I will all, also forget to what? Let my yes be yes and my no be no. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Satan loves it. I'll leave you with this. Satan loves it if you are unprotected, if you are in the basement where he can send you his thoughts and pick up your thoughts. Yeah. And Satan loves it if you're a bladdermouth. God loves it when you're secure on the first floor with a landline. And God loves it when your yes is yes, your no be no. That, that, it, it goes from A to B quick. It's like a plane. It just The plane can't stop. Any hang time, the enemy will pick it up. Amen. So develop those good communication habits of let your yes be yes, just in case you want, you're caught in enemy airspace. Amen. You see? And, and the damage, the infliction upon your mind and your soul and your body and the oppression of your spirit. It will greatly less because the enemy it can't pick you up. Amen. I just want to leave you with this launch. We switched our view from us, the fight that's in us, to the fight outside of us. That's what we did. So we, we, we talk a lot about the flesh and the spirit, the inside fight. You know, the mind or the soul has to side without the flesh and the spirit. But remember, the flesh and the spirit grow in an atmosphere and an environment. We switch to the outside. Unless you understand the Wi-Fi, which is the wireless zone of thoughts, where thoughts are received and transmitted. And the secret of how it works is to know that there's always a satellite.
There's always a middle thing controlling yeah. the receiving and broadcasting. When you switch to God, He gives you a secure line or a landline. If you still have the world system, the world system is, your mind can either use, when you have a mind, you either get a cell phone or a landline. Amen. Yeah. Perfect. And, and because you have free will, you can switch between both. God never wants you to use a cell phone because it's not a secure line. Perfect. Anybody can listen to it. Perfect. Yeah. So if you have a mind, sorry, the rain falls on the just and unjust alike. Yeah. I live in the war zone. Perfect. You see, there's a saying that says, every bird in the air, don't let it land on your head. Perfect. You see, when you use a cell phone, you're asking birds to land yes. on your head. Perfect. No. When you, when you have a mind, you have a choice. If I accept Jesus Christ, I get a landline. Yes. That controls my outside atmosphere. Mm -hmm. if, if, if I don't accept Jesus Christ, I, I only have option. I can only use a cell phone. Yeah. But too bad Satan, what? Picks up all cell phones. Yeah. It's not a protected line. It's no. not a secure line. Perfect. He senses it's the thoughts. He's prince of the power of the air. He captures them. He alters them. He messes up all your communication. Yeah. You don't know who you are. You don't know who Jill is. You don't know who God is. You're seeing everything wrong. All the wrong thoughts are giving you all the wrong feelings. Your perspective on life is so skewed. Yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. Don't, you don't know your left hand from your right. The landline is only can only broadcast the truth, Amen. which is God's original intent, Amen. how we design things. There's nothing else can play on that Amen. channel. Amen. Any, any broadcast from that landline, it must match the word of God. Perfect. And not only does that, does that free you from all the lies, but that, that line has authority. Perfect. That frequency, that landline, it dominates all the other lines. Amen. It pushes all the other frequencies away. All the cell phone reception in that area stops. Amen. You see, and you can only hear the frequency of the truth. You see, so you may walk in with a cell phone, but you have to leave it at the door. Amen. Hallelujah. When you, when you leave, Satan's like, hey, how about listening to your old transmission? Where's our old device? And you have free will. You can go, I like thinking. La, 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 la. Yeah. See? Yeah. So for God's sakes, have a landline, a protected land. Mm -hmm. And learn, just in case you have old habits, you can pick up your cell phone. Don't go blabbing. Let your yes be yes, your no be no. Be quick, be fast. Don't let him pick you up. You see? You'll, you'll be in his zone, but he can't pick you up. Perfect. Too quick. You know, yes. Or, uh, like the FBI, the army, what? Need yeah. a minute or something to... To, yeah. to trace your call, yes. and then like good spy goes, we only have 30 seconds, then they are able to locate the location of this yes. call, yes. and they're out. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're in this region of the Wi-Fi, please don't help him. <laughs> Get back to our region and start to broadcast and dominate. Amen? Because that's what Amen. you're designed to do. You're given the landline to broadcast and dominate. You're given the cell phone to be infiltrated. Hallelujah.